Hi, it's Mr. Rossman, and today we're going to look at how do we find the measure of an angle without a protractor. As the instructions say, you will not use a protractor to solve these problems. Uh, actually, what we're looking at is a fact family problem. It's just disguised as a angle measurement problem. So first of all, let's pay attention to the fact that a right angle is 90 degrees and a straight angle, otherwise known as a line or line segment, is going to be 180 degrees. So that is one piece of the information puzzle that we need to solve each of these problems. So if you take a look at problem number one, you have an unknown angle uh, that is part of a right angle. You can tell it's a right angle because of the square corner. So I know that the entire angle here is 90 degrees. So my equation with the unknown is going to start out with 90 degrees minus. And what are we subtracting? Well, we are subtracting the other known. That would be 30 degrees. So if I know that a right angle is 90 degrees and I'm subtracting 30 from it, well, 9 minus 3 is going to give me 6, so 9 tens minus 3 tens is going to give me 6 tens, otherwise known as 60 degrees. So really all we're doing is that we are establishing a fact family triangle where we know that 90 is at the top and one of our factors, or in this case uh, add ends, is 30 and just the missing number was 60. 3 plus 6 equals 9, 30 plus 60 equals 90, and then we could subtract the difference. 90 minus 60 is 30, 90 minus 30 is 60. Okay, well that's if it's a right angle. Let's look to see if it is a straight line or straight angle, which is 180 degrees. Well, I know that one of my uh, the number I'm subtracting with is 100, so I'm going to set up my problem 180 degrees minus 100. So again, since I know that this problem is just 18 with a 0 behind it minus 10 with a 0, 18 minus 10 is going to give me 80. So when I set up the problem with the unknown, it reads 180 minus 100 equals B, I know that B must stand for 80, because 80 is just 8 tens. So that is basically how I would go about solving these problems. Now real quickly, down at the, brown, at the bottom we have some practice problems. Order the fractions from smallest to largest. Smallest to largest. Problem number one is pretty straightforward. They all have the same numerator. So the question is, what are the pieces and how small are they? Well, we have to think in reverse because the smaller the number of the denominator, the larger the piece actually is. So if I have 7 eighths, that means my circle or square or rectangle or whatever thing I've cut up into 8 parts, each part is going to be 1 eighth. Now if I take the same rectangle and if I cut it up into more parts, like say nine parts, like in seven ninths, that means each one of my individual pieces has to be a little bit smaller. Now I know my rectangles aren't exactly uh, proportional, but as you can see, one ninth is going to be a lot smaller than one eighth. So the larger the number, the smaller the piece. So if I order this from smallest to largest, I'm going to start with the largest denominator or largest number. And that would be my 12 down there. So 7 twelfths would be my smallest fraction. And of course, whenever I'm putting something in order, it's good for me to just eliminate things uh, as I go. So 7 twelfths. 7 tenths, 7 ninths, and then 7 eighths. If you have any questions, feel free to let us know. Have your parents give us a shout or send us an email. Otherwise, have a good evening.